fate of Tolka is on Ishida's hand. It's been circulating around that her life is in grave danger. The 24 war arc is putting that to the test. And it has not stopped causing people to panic. That said, I want to discuss about Toka and where her life is heading to. Not necessarily jumping far ahead to the future. Rather the current and the next arc if no massive time skip. Perhaps it can be fine, just a small hurdle here and there. But perhaps not. The series doesn't shy away from inputting hints that her life is set to be in a danger zone. And it all started from earlier chapters, before the raid. It seems like her survival test began from the moment she and Kaneki began talking about love. Back at the cafe is when I start to think that maybe, just maybe her life is in jeopardy. Usually when the series enters the love side of the protagonist long before the ending, it could only mean bad deeds are coming for either him or his lover. In short, early love can lead them to tragic events. As much as I love the fact that they're together as a couple, the fact it happened sooner before any sign of series end factors darkness. The centipede before a small time skip is a dark omen that points to tragedy occurrence inbound. Case in point, the 24 war raid. The series is known to have plenty of nice and cherished moments, but Ishida always find his way to strike it when it's hot. In my opinion, it tops it off with Kaneki's and Toka's marriage. Yes, I said that. It's not that I don't want them to get married, but why they have to get married early on. Sure, it's not that early like series beginning or even middle, but it's far apart from the ending. When things get all lovely and sweet, it pays way for the horrible outcome. Examples like Guts and Casca from Berserk. It happened early on, but if you have read it, you know exactly what led to next. There are series that makes the pairing canon and trying to start a family early on, but it tends to kill one off before it can get started. This may not apply much to shonen or something much innocent than Senen, so that's fine. It's true that Senen can be merciful and have the family being made, but because of Tokyo Ghoul track record, it's hard to count out the possibility until Toka gives birth and everyone remains alive. If we were to have someone to pull the trigger at last bring tragedy towards her, there are candidates that can be the one. As of chapter 140, Suzuya has the best chance due to the fact on how it all lined up. He has been pushed as the next Arima, the next Prodigy, the next Grim Reaper. It's eerie to think that the timing of the event parallels to part 1 with Arima slaughtering Kaneki. Can history repeat itself? There was once a poem that recites a similar setup of the current situation with him and Toka. It's about the choice to kill the cat or dog, being forced to choose one and let the other one live. The cat was killed and revealed to be pregnant. Could this poem hint that it would play off in a canonical scenario, only with Toka instead? It's eerie to think that she was called a cat by Muski not long ago. It could be a coincidence, but I have doubts. Suzuya has the opportunity to turn back against Furuta, leaving Toka safe and sound, at least from him. Basically her life is depending on his decision. That or someone will arrive to save her on time. Despite if Suzuya would do it or not, Furuta is there and he has done deeds that can appear out of nowhere and fatally destroy everything. Now that he's here is worrisome. Depending on the identity, Dragon can be a surprise candidate. It was suggested that it is present at the scene, but vaguely said the identity. It could be Suzuya and if he declines to kill Toka, then you can remove Dragon off the list. If not him, then it can be the one. It would set the standard of his brutality and mark as the most hated creature, whatever it is. Muski could be another one, but unless she defeats or escapes from Yomo, she may not have any part of it, regardless of how badly she wants to corrupt her. As of now, the best candidate goes to Suzuya, and if he doesn't do it or fails to do so, we have others left to focus on. The big question is whether Toka will die or not. In my opinion, I don't think she would die, but I think her child will. Recall back to chapter 122 cover. The region of blood coloring is coming from her stomach area. Normally, Ishida will show signs using his artwork, including tarot card's number. 
he could have chosen a better coloring or indication of her childbirth, but the mark of red indicates bad omen. It could be a hint that her child will be the one to die. I believe Ishida purposely has her carrying Kaneki's child early on to provide another extent of tragic event. In Berserk, the couple got together, but one tragic event happened and things weren't the same at all. Toko is doing her hardest to give birth to this child, so the worst that can happen is early death before it can see the light. You may be wondering, what's the point of building up to that baby's birth, date and all? Many series like this tend to make you believe on good path despite with some bumpy trails. Once you fall for it, the writer can destroy your mind. Hope is what we latch on and when things get destroyed, you be depressed. Sometimes it just doesn't go your way. Shirazu was a character that I didn't think would die that early, but he did, even with a sign of many developments. If Toka doesn't die, her child may fail in that spot, and that alone is enough to feel the tragedy. Of course, the story could be merciful and have her successfully give birth and everything will be fine. I wouldn't mind that. My point is the possibility of tragedy and pregnancy is a reason for one. The effect from the 24 war arc won't go to status quo. I have seen many people want Toka to die just to bring the old Kaneki, the one who would torture and kill without mercy. That effect can happen whether Toka dies or not. The trigger to his rage can apply with her or child's death. It has been hinted that Kaneki's sanity is slowly declining hinting that he may start betraying his ideology of not killing anyone. The emphasis of his love for Toka is purposely shown profoundly because it raised the stake of her life equally to his breakdown. He has lost so much that another loss can break him. Not to mention that it is also hinted that he may begin cannibalizing, so loss to care will push him to do so. It is possible that Kaneki could go mad just by seeing corpses without the need of any problem to Toka. I understand that her death would be significant over anything, including just losing the child. But if Ishida won't kill her off here, the next step is the child. Toka's death would just end her character and Kaneki would proceed as accordingly. Toka remain alive could only add to her character if she lost something. The story has been placing hardship towards her with the loss of her cafe and the unconfirmed fate of Yoriko, her best friend, who is sentenced to death. You could add Yomo to the list since he left a farewell note. Metaphorically speaking, it does feel like it is setting up more of Toka's suffering than anything if you ask me. If Yoriko dies, I can only see nothing but a train of tragedy for Toka. Perhaps this is Ishida's way to change her drastically, much like with Kaneki back in part 1. She's a strong-willed woman who can keep her emotions secure from outside, but she can break if you keep pushing her. Is this a cruel ploy of Ishida to finally set her off? I once thought maybe Furuta can end up capturing her and torment her at the lab. A massive taunt to Kaneki. Won't that be Griffith's level of hate? It's all on Ishida's call in the end. We could only predict on her character's path. Will it be a peaceful family? Will she go through series of suffering? Will she die? It is not far-fetched to believe that the series will do something incredibly cruel to the characters and Toka won't be the last. It's painful to think all the worst possibilities, but it will all be over soon. What are your thoughts about Toka's fate? Do you want her to die? Do you want her to live but suffer? I know you could say, I want her to live, period. But you have to think the dark side of the story. Because we know Tokyo Ghoul is known for that, tragic and all. Maybe it could be something else. Maybe she will be safe. We don't know. We can only predict the worst possibility. It can be easily said for the good possibility, but we know the series is merciless when it comes to dark deeds. So we can only hope that Ishida is just toying with our emotions. And that will do it for the discussion. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you like this and want more of this, subscribe to my channel and my world will be yours to stay. Until next time, take care.